Hey class, it's Philip Seagraves. We're going to go through some smoothing techniques today using Excel, but all the same stuff applies with pencil and paper. Okay, let's take a look at our actual sales numbers that we have here. We have sales that are ranging from 72,000 in December down to 56,000 for the following December. And somebody's asked us to give us a forecast. Let's say that we didn't know these values yet. And all we've got is December. Somebody wants a forecast for January. What our naive model, it's simply the last value. So if I ask you what a naive forecast is for January, it's just going to be the same thing it was in December. And assuming we've got actual values here, our forecast, if we're in January, our forecast for February would be the same thing as January of sales. So if we just move down, I'm just copying those values down, we can see that these sales forecasts are just one month lag. Now a three period moving average means that we're going to have to take an average of the three prior periods. That means that with this data set we can't even begin to do a forecast until March because we're going to have to take the average of three months. So in this case let's just do a simple average formula in Excel, highlight those values, close the parentheses and press enter. I can just drag those down and it calculates my 3 period or 3 PMA, 3 period moving average. Now you're not going to have an average formula in on your piece of paper when you're using a pencil with this, but you're just going to add up these three values and then divide by 3. So that should be pretty easy. And our 3 period weighted moving average, we're going to assign some weights to these values. In this case, Let's use a 50% weight for our most recent period, a 30% weight for the period before that, and a 20% weight before that. We'll just put it here to remember it. Oops, we need to go ahead and, and get some larger decimal places so we can see what we got going on here. To bring those formatting up, I'll just copy it and then we'll change those. 0 0.3 and a 0.2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these same three values, but now I'm going to apply these weights to them. So I'm going to multiply my most recent times my 0.5. I'm going to add it to the value before that times the 30. And I am going to add the value before that from December times the 0.2. Now if I just drag these down, it's, it's going to try to drag these percentages down, but I want to keep them there. So wherever I've got an E4, E5, E6, I need to lock those down with my absolute uh, function using the F4. So I'll go in here, hit F4, go in the E5, hit F4, go in the E4 and hit F4, hit enter. And now when I drag this down, it's going to correctly point to these three values the whole time. You see there, those point to the right values. We have my percentages up here, and down here we have the values that I'm using. Okay, well what about that pesky exponential? Well, we can do an exponential forecast for, a, for only after the first period that we have a forecast for. So our first period is just going to be a naive forecast with an exponential. Now we can use the exponential and I've gone ahead and put my alpha up here which remembers our smoothing factor which goes from 0 to 1. Normally it's in the 0.3 to 0.4 range and this is the percentage of the error that we're going to use each time. So in this case we are going to use our prior forecast and some percentage of the error that we made on that forecast. So let's see what happens here. First, we're going to use our prior value and we're going to add a percentage of the forecast. What percent? This percentage up here, my alpha. So I want to keep that, so I'm going to use my F4 again like I did before. And I'm going to multiply that alpha or that percentage by the error that I made last time. The error that I made last time was my last actual minus my forecast. In this case, it's going to be negative. So it's going to revise my forecast down a little bit for the next time. So I have my prior forecast times my alpha 
I'm plus the alpha times the error that I made last time. And that error I made last time was the, the actual was below. So I need to adjust my next forecast in a downward direction. Uh-oh. Well, you can see what happened in this case. I didn't use my multiplication symbol there, my asterisk in this case. Now in Excel, even though in if you're writing algebraically down on a piece of paper, you wouldn't have to have that multiplication sign before the parentheses. You do have to have that in Excel. All right, now let's go ahead and pull that guy down here. And what you see is my forecast. And because my actual was lower, it takes my forecast for the next time and drops it a little bit. It takes my forecast from last time and moves it a little closer to the actual from the time before. And then this time, we made about a $7,000 error, somewhere in that range. So it takes a third of that and drops the forecast down a little bit. Okay, and this time, we made about a $4,000 error, 62000 to 58. So it's going to take about a third of that and drop it down a little bit the next time. This time we made, oh my gosh, we made about a $6,000 mistake. So it takes about a third of that, which is about 2000 so you can see what it does is it adjusts that every time based on that alpha. Some percentage of the mistake you made, it goes ahead and uses that. Now over here we have an area which I'll save for a later video, which is how to calculate some of those statistics that we use to measure how good we're doing in these things. So we have our mean absolute deviation, which we'll calculate that in, a, in our next video. Okay, hopefully this helps. Walk through all this, you should be able to, if you're given some forecasts like this, you should some actual values, you should be able to calculate each of these forecasts by hand. You should be able to calculate the naive forecast. You should be able to calculate three period moving average values if you, as long as you have the three periods before. You should be able to calculate a three period weighting moving average as long as you've got the weights and three periods. You should also be able to calculate an exponential. Remember your first value is going to be like the naive and then as you move down it's going to be the weight times the difference plus the prior forecast. Okay, you guys study hard and, and get working on those projects.